Hello everybody, welcome to another steering team video for the School Improvement Institute. The focus of this video is to provide instructions for your student body point person. My name is Sue Reynolds and I am president of the American Student Achievement Institute. So this will be a pretty quick video. Um, the focus is again to um, help the student discussion point person. Uh, with coordinating a school-wide discussion among all of your students of topics that are relevant to school improvement planning. So remember that on your steering team, when you delegated tasks, one person was given the responsibility of the student body point person. And so that's the person that this uh, video is designed for, to help you think about how am I going to coordinate this, uh, this series of discussions among all of the student body. So we've written the instructions in a document called the Student Body Point Person Instructions, and um, it is document 3.1 in, um, in your manual. So just as a reminder, I'm going to go online and show you where that is real quickly. So when you're logged in as your school, you want to go to the manual page, and if you scroll down to the third section, um, actually I guess it's 3.2, Student Body Discussion Instructions, and the video that we, we are recording right now will be 3.1. So that's where to get it, um, and I'm just going to run through it real quickly and highlight some points for you. So. Um, First of all, at the top of the document is the discussion prompts um, for the update schools. And there are five discussions. The first one's in October, and then um, the last one will conclude in March. So, and also in each of the videos that we, um, and webinars that we provide for you each month, we'll talk about the student body discussion for that month. Okay, then the next section is a planning guide. This is just a series of questions to uh, help you think through how you're going to coordinate this in your building. So when and where will you meet with, with students? Uh, I think what most of our schools do is, is they'll, they'll say, okay, the first meeting we're going to do a whole school breakout in second period classes, and each second period classroom will, will have their discussion. The next discussion will happen in period three. Um, or that, of course, would work, might work a little differently in an elementary school. So, or maybe you have a homeroom that you can have the discussions during. So when and where are you going to meet? And then, and then just the rest of the questions. How many students are going to be in a group? How many groups are you going to need? When will the first discussion occur? Who's going to be the facilitators? Who's going to be the recorders? So just look through all of these questions. They'll, they'll help you think about all the little details that you need to cover. Um, in your planning to, to make this work well in a coordinated way throughout your school. Okay, so in terms of the discussion, it's really important to this process that all students are involved. So we want um, every single student to have a, a voice in the school improvement planning. Sometimes schools take shortcuts by uh, only involving representatives of the student body. Um, but And then later when they do that, they, they have a hard time creating buy-in. So we really want every single student to have an opportunity to have input. Also, we want to remind you that this is, for some teachers, kind of risky. Um, you know, to just have kids talk about, you know, the school and what's wrong with it and what can we, where can we improve. But just, you know, emphasize to the teachers that no teachers' names are going to be used during the discussions. Um, and that this activity will give students a way to have a voice in the school improvement process. Um, our experience that the kids have the best advice. They, they know what the school needs to do to improve. Um, and when we open up that discussion, they'll tell us. So some of the questions, um, the questions were designed to be age appropriate for upper elementary um, uh, middle school and high school students. We do want you to have these discussions, however, with lower elementary students also, um, including, you know, kindergartners. So, um, but you'll need to reword those questions so that they're age um, level appropriate um, in the vocabulary and such for the lower elementary kids. Some tips on selecting facilitators and advisors. Um, facilitators can be teachers, they can also be students. 
in um, in most of our schools, the the facilitators are students. They've been trained to facilitate these discussions, and the recorders in each in each uh, discussion group is also a student. So um, so read this section. It gives you some uh, ideas about how to get your facilitators and recorders, and um, um, so that that should help. Then the next session is on getting ready. Prior to the student discussion, we need you know we need to have a, a couple things. You have to decide when it's going to take place and how, and then you want to meet with the facilitators. That's really really important. One of the things that you want to do is give them the SI2 info page so they'll have a, the big picture of what's going on, and then we want to also discuss their responsibility, which is is described in in this handout for you. So during the discussion, the facilitators, the students that you're preparing or the teachers that you're preparing, the service facilitators, first thing they're going to do is provide an introduction. So here's one that we've written for you. Um, you know, they don't have to read this. I would ask them to put this in their own words. Then, very important, we want to establish the ground rules for this discussion. First ground rule, every idea will be taken seriously. We had a kindergarten once, kindergartner once that said that the school would improve if they would just paint the walls pink. And we took it seriously and it went into the system and of course, you know, later when we were determining what the biggest root causes were, not having pink walls was not a big root cause, but that student was validated because we took that, that suggestion seriously. So, okay, so every idea is going to be taken seriously. Individual names will not be mentioned in the discussion. We're going to strive to identify positive changes rather than uh, dwell on, on past problems. So the facilitator is going to be trained that if the, the discussion starts to become a gripe session, they're going to turn that discussion around and, and focus on the future and what we need to do to make it better. And then finally, number four, this is a brainstorm. That's a ground rule. That means there, that we will not actually discuss ideas, but we're basically creating a list of as many ideas as we as we can. So then the facilitator would appoint a student recorder if there's not one already appointed to work as a team with that facilitator. Um, and they'd introduce today's inquiry question. So the discussion prompt is, and then to give an example of what a response might look like, the facilitator would say, and if I were answering that question, I might say something like, you know, blah, blah, blah. And then they would turn, you know, to the group and say, what would you say? You know, and then and then reiterate what the prompt is. So we want to keep the discussion on a positive note. Um, in a lot of schools, this is the first time students have been asked about how they feel about their education and not used to this kind of activity. Um, they may not believe that their voice is going to be taken seriously. Um, and they may think that this is a gripe session, that, that it's okay to just start talking about everything that that's bad. So, and we've given a little example here. For example, if a student were to say, our biology teacher stinks, the facilitator could counter with, well, that's why we're doing this work, to help our school improve. And then reiterate what's the prompt again and, and, um, and, and, and turn that discussion to be focused and positive. Okay. After the discussion, we want to make sure that the students understand that we heard them. So, um, so if it's if it's possible to implement one of the students' ideas immediately, you need to do that, and then let the kids know that you that you did it. Um, I mentioned in one of our other videos that we had a school where the kids said, you know, we really would like to have more ketchup in the cafeteria, and overnight the teachers made sure that there was more ketchup in the cafeteria, and then the kids knew that they were heard. You know, the teachers went on the PA and said, you know, during our discussion yesterday it was mentioned that you wanted more ketchup, and we, you now have more ketchup. You know, so it was just something little, but that little um, response made the students understood that you were listening, and that their voice was going to count. They had the power to make change. Very important. Really empowers the students. So, um, and then other ways that you can let kids know that you heard them. When the um, uh, person is uh, writing down, the recorder is writing down all the ideas on flip chart paper, or what a lot of schools would just do is take those flip chart papers and put them up in the hallway. Um, some schools read a student comment every morning on the, the announcements. Um, we had one school that wrote the, um, the students wrote the, um, 
student council position paper on school improvement, which was, I thought, pretty cool, and they distributed it to all the kids. Um, so, um, yeah, so be um, thinking uh, about how you're going to let the kids know that they were heard. Again, that's really important. If When the kids know that you're listening and that you hear them and they have the power to impact change, they will come forth with the best ideas for you as we go forward with more discussion about goals and root causes and all that. So, um, yeah, so, that, so that's it in a nutshell. And again, you have this document in the manual. Um, so you can look at the document and kind of get coordinated. Um, yeah, so that's, you know, pretty quick. Um, also, remember that um, if you need help, um, please feel free to call Tina. Um, that's what she's here for. Um, we have teased about the five-minute rule that it's our rule that if you're ever confused more than five minutes, you must call Tina. You're required to call Tina. Uh, Tina has shortened that to the five-second rule, and but basically, you know, we just want to make sure that you call Tina immediately. Um, if you're confused or something doesn't make sense or you want to run a, an idea by Tina, um, you can just do a, a call, a, you know, a call for on-call support immediately. Um, or if you need a lot of time, you know, if you want to sit down for half an hour, an hour with her, just schedule an appointment and, and sit down and chit-chat about how you're planning to do this with the council or with the student body. Um, if there's any questions that come up from your faculty that you can't answer, uh, call Tina. So we really want Tina to be there for you as the student body point person uh, to help you make this work well. And again, um, our experience has been that the students they know what schools need to do to improve. Um, and, and they'll tell you. They're not going to use the words differentiated instruction like we do, but they will certainly describe all the aspects of differentiated instruction and other things that you need to do to improve your school. So, okay, that's it. And um, I'll close. And again, if you have questions, please, please, please call Tina.